Okie dokie guys, we're back in the back of the cab of the uh, old Silvertone. Uh, <laughs> the one that's a 200 watt amp back in the day, back in the 60s when it was the last amp ever made. And we want to test each individual speaker. And there's a real quick test to do. It has to do with a uh, 9 volt battery and a uh, couple of jumpers, leads like this. Since the uh, poles are so far apart, what we're looking for, listening to, sorry, what we're trying to listen to is uh, some static or noise coming out of the speaker when we put the uh, little probes up against the, the leads on the uh, individual speaker. If you can see what I'm doing here. Like that, that means it's good. Okay. Go the next one. That's good. All right, let's go to this one. Uh -oh. oh, that's good, yeah, that's good. We're just trying for some noise, guys. That's all we're looking for. We're listening to. It produces some noise. Yeah, that one's good. And that one's good, okay. <laughs> this cab are working. This is how we do it. Now, if there's a newer speakers, the uh, poles are much closer together, and you don't need these little jumpers. The uh, 9 bolt, you just kind of place it right there and touch them, <laughs> you know. Make that popping sound to let you know that speakers are all working or not working. You get a dead sound, nothing happens, well, that speaker's blown. <laughs> the trouble I've got right now is I have nothing to power this thing uh, to really get it to get, you know, play loud as it can play. Uh, I've only got a 75 watt uh, little uh, um, uh, line six setup that goes in the uh, on, through the uh, uh, output uh, jack, which is not powerful enough to drive these speakers. So it really needs an individual head that uh, just like the one it's got. But well, you saw the test earlier of the uh, nine bolt and how that's done with a couple of jumpers. And uh, what I decided to do for this guy, a friend of mine, I'm going to replace these old wires uh, with the uh, replacements. These are 60 year old wires that. Since it's in my shop, I might as well go ahead and do it for him and set these up nicely. Now we'll be putting on uh, some uh, 18 uh, gauge wire, just replace the same stuff that's used here, and just uh, set that up nice and uh, have that you know working for him. So that shouldn't be a big deal. But these are you know worn out and, and it's very possible as old as they are, uh, they can develop a, a uh, you know issue with continuity and. Uh, you know, 60 year old wires need to be replaced, and it, it won't hurt the uh, uh, antiqueness of, <laughs> of the uh, um, cab itself. So, hang in there, guys. We'll heat up the soldering iron and we'll replace these one by one. Uh, the red first, of course, get those out of there and go from there. So, hang in there, guys. Okay, well, <laughs> while it's heating up, I'm testing it and off one fall, so that's the way it goes. Well, the magnets on these things are really strong. A little tool in there to get this thing off here. What am I doing? Oh, ha! <laughs> Actually, pulling on the uh, darn cord to the phone, the camera. Yeah, these got this thing has only got like two wires still attached to it on the cable itself, so it really does need to be replaced. And it's wrapped, unfortunately, all the way around this thing, and on the inside, this makes it a nightmare. It's like it's off of here, and it's got too much solder on it as well. So I've got to get it off this thing. Wow, what a nightmare! That just broke. All right, let's just wire off here, out of that hole. I'll come back later and uh, clean that hole out, make sure it's available. But, uh, well, it is available, okay, so it's open. This other one is not, but I'll go ahead and wire this up. And on these, you don't leave any, uh, Slack them. You get them, you know, decently tight. Okay. You don't want to have too much uh, slack in them. 
All righty, let's get our tools and get at it. And what I'll do is replace the all the white ones or the red ones first, <coughs> and go from there. All the stuff out of my way and measurement on this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Bring it up wire. Okay, so we're right there. That's plenty. And doing this, you want to make sure you get enough lead on there to uh, use. Right, so we wrap it around that uh, post as well as go in that hole. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And it should be real simple to get down that hole because it's a big hole in that uh, contact leg on the speaker. Yeah, big hole. All right. Back in there. Yep, look at that. But I'm not going to wrap it around. I'm just going to solder it in just like it should be. Just like that. And the other. Just like that. But I think what I'll do is clean off that other one first. After I solder this one in and get the hole exposed. And that way it uh, is a better contact rather than, uh, you know, surface contact for a solder job. So, that's what I use to uh, clean out these holes with the solder that's uh, all jammed up in it. Okay, dokie. Let's go ahead and get this other one off here first and then clean this thing out. Always fun trying to grab this when there's so much uh, magnetism on it. Let's just get that old solder off there. There it goes. Now it's breaking up. Ah, oh, they wrapped it again. Just wrapped it really too much. Now I'm thinking, why would they wrap this thing this much? Other than there's an issue with it coming loose for, for them with other models. You know what I'm saying? Let's try that. Let's try to uh, imagine why they would do this. Because that just kind of uh, really overkill in my opinion. And uh, there's not a lot of advantage to doing it that way. Cause if you pull that hard on it's gonna bust anyway and these aren't the kind that take uh, any type of pressure but they sure did look at the lead on this hold on guys while I show you on the camera the lead see the lead the length on this thing wow I think uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that with these replacements as well I'm gonna go in there and go ahead Instead of just put in the hole and that's that. Uh, do a uh, do a bit of a wrap. Uh, let's see if I got enough on this one or not. No, I'll have to save this one for later. I can wrap, I can semi wrap the one on this end and leave that one like that. Now I can I can twist that too a bit that in there, that done. All right, like that. And then set up for the next one. Okie dokie. So I've got these down somewhat. I'm gonna take off some of that slack by opening this up a little bit more and making more of a wrap on this end. And make it a little bit tighter in the meantime. Okie dokie. So hang in there. Okay, so this one, that's the last of the connections for it. This one I can solder up now. Put it up on there and make sure I got good contact with the speaker leg. Make sure it's not going anywhere. 
And the hole on that's not hot enough. There's a good solder joint right there. Now to the next one. Uh, cut one to run from here to the next speaker junction. From here over to here. And that should be that. I think on the white wire replacement so far. The rest of it is black. The next wire set up for it. What about black? Come on, hands. Out. A long. Alright, so that's the length of it. And I can make sure to have enough wire on that. Uh, exposed so I can get a job done right. This one may be actually the only one I can actually take off here. <laughs> Not too much trouble, but that uh, post is really loose on this thing. Wow, is it loose. It may need to be fixed. The wire on this thing is wrapped again. As you can see like a noose. Oh, Jesus. Makes it near impossible to get these damn things off of here. And that post is really too loose. Oh, jeez. Now what? Hmm. I'll take a pair of scissors. I'm going to clip that right where it is. Hopefully those ends will fall off there as best they can. And the rest will have to get out of there with that tool. So I need a sharp pair of scissors on the tips. <sighs> now again, it's only one connector on this. One, sorry, connection with the wire. So I don't have to do too much but get all that other crap out of there as best I can. So it doesn't contact the speaker hub itself. As you can see, it's wrapped very strangely, like in a noose around the damn thing. And trying to get it out of there is not easy. I don't know why they do this. Kind of like, well, we're gonna make sure whoever replaces this has lots, loads of fun. I think I'm almost, I got it, yay! Look at that, guys. They made a noose out of that. But you can't fault them. It's been there for 60 years. Still works. Can't argue with that. All right, so let's go and trim this other wire up. Get enough wire exposed on it. And they can solder both these ends. And that'll be the end of the soldering for a while. So, now we got the last one to get off there, right? And maybe this will be an easy one because I don't see a lot of solder unless it's really wrapped real badly, which is always a potential. I've seen so far they all were. <laughs> and this, actually, this post has been bent. Bent upwards so I don't know what that's all about it got hit by something going inside the cab that didn't belong in there yeah it's wrapped damn it and it's bent so that doesn't help a lot this one is going to need to be cut to and pulled out differently so instead of putting too much time and effort into that cut it and get it out of there trim as close as I can with these scissors that's gone and now with my little tool, a little probe, I'm gonna try to get underneath that loop or inside the loop at least, get some of that crap out of there. Like I said, it didn't all have to come out, just most of it, so I don't doesn't touch the cab or the base of the speaker. I just want that wire only to touch the uh, post itself. 
And I had no idea why it's been twisted up like it has been, but I'm really concerned about it bending if I put too much pressure on it. There comes some of that. See that? It's so wrapped in there. I'm gonna try to pull it out by getting underneath the loop with this probe. And nothing seems to be working. Did that give me enough relief to get that damn loop off of there? Shit! Oh, frustrating guys, very frustrating. Uh, must be a ton of solder on the back of this thing. Because it is holding steady. Now it's coming loose. I could just get stamp tip in there. There's some of it. I get the tip inside of it, I can break it. Break that loop. There it came. Jesus. What a butt fuck. Alright. <laughs> I've got all the white wires set up now to go on. Oh, so I can solder that one last one once I get this uh, joint fixed up. And I got a kink. So I'm definitely not going to use that part of this white wire. Until you have a kink in your uh, wire, it's best to go ahead and just cut it free. Use it for something else, but don't use it to, on what you're working on because you never know if that's going to short it unless you want to stop and get the voltmeter out and do a test on it, which I don't. Let's cut it free. Plenty of wire. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I'm just setting up this next and last one for this today to make its last connection in the loop. And when my three wire comes in, as well as my other 18 comes in, I'll finish this job up. In the meantime, you guys get to see what it's all about. It's rewiring an old cabinet. And I won't be putting any hangman's nooses in the uh, <laughs> the wires I'm doing here. Just for the, you know, the next guy, have him, give him a break. I was going to kind of loop it over like a J loop, take up the slack. On the inside, just like that. That's way too much slack. Okay. So what I got to do, I got too much slack. I got to cut some away, but the easiest way to do it is just to remove some more plastic down its line. Then whatever extra is left, once you've twisted it in there, I mean that J loop, just cut the extra free. Easiest way to do it. And that way you get a little bit tighter than what it just was. Like I said, it doesn't have to be, you know, tight rope tight, but it's better not to have a big loop hanging there because something's bound to catch on it. And so you pull it free, not watch what they're doing. That's more than enough tight right there, right? Nope, I don't like that either. All right, I'm going to, have to tighten up more than that. So now I can cut away some of this lead, expose the lead, get in there and uh, expose some more of the wire, cutting the insulation off, try to get it higher than it was. That was just too much wire to start with. I, know, I got that messed up. I didn't measure it too well. I probably should have taken a tape and done it instead of just doing it by the side. All right, that's got that one. Okay, there you go. That's tight enough. So I can hit the last two spots with solder, and that will be that for this particular amp today, or this cab today. And wait for Mr. Mailman to come with all the other stuff, all the other good tools and toys and such. And lately it seems like all I do is wait for the mailman to bring me uh, things like files and supplies and 
bone, <laughs> you name it. They bring me out everything. I, all right, come on, solder. Give me a good hot solder spot like this. Don't make cold. Damn it, shine. There you go. Okay, so I've got uh, everything shining, everything where it belongs, where it should be. Okay, I got one wire that came loose by uh, just being worn out. And uh, touching it got too hot, I guess. And it was just uh, on a contact. It wasn't inside the loop itself. I've got one or two wires down here just uh, roughly twisted into the uh, eyelet, waiting for the proper uh, wires to come in from the shop or from uh, wherever I bought them from. I can't remember. Anyway, also, one other new thing coming into my shop is that. Uh, I've decided to go ahead after all these years and buy a uh, a reamer. I've always used an awl that I've had for God who knows. I think it's like maybe my great granddad's handed down all through the years. And I'd sharpen both sides of it and on counter sides to make it uh, be able to cut wood when ex you know expanding a hole or deburring something. Well, actually, just wood only. It's not really made to deburr. But anyway, it's coming in, and I'll be using that to uh, expand some holes and put in some new fender uh, tuners. Really nice ones, the new style, kind of the, the double nibs on the bottom, so you don't have to use screws into your guitar's headstock. Of course, you got to drill holes for the nibs. But <laughs> Anyway, that should be really nice for the guy who owns it, and uh, it's replacing some really bad, worn-out tuners. So he's going to be really surprised to see those on his guitar when he gets it back, because they weren't that expensive. And of course, we always give them back their old parts in case they want to, you know, use them for something else. But in the meantime, that's it for this project until all the parts show up. So let me just show you around it once more. Just replacing old wires with new ones. There she be. She's all wired back up again. I got like 25 feet of extra wire on it to run it. Same thickness as the other. Uh, the cord to the uh, jack, same thickness. Just different colors. You know, <laughs> kind of happy looking. White, red, and yellow. But uh, jack's attached, ready to plug it into something. Let it crank, you know, let it crank. <laughs> This is a big ass cabinet, guys. You don't see the, you don't see these too many often. You know, you don't see these too many more of these around. Oh man, big cabinet, big cabinet. So let's turn around, crank it up, and see what we can get. I don't, I don't think any, I don't have anything here to drive this cabinet. I need a big uh, 150 watt uh, head amp to uh, uh, push this thing to its fullest, and uh, I don't have anything like that around. It's not broken, so. <laughs> We'll figure out something to make it play. Hang in there. Okay, well, we got it finished. Back and working again. <laughs> Back and rock and rolling. <laughs> it's not very loud because I don't have much to push it with, guys. Let's see. If I had something strong enough to push it, this thing would really have a lot of tone to it, a lot of sound. Well, I got a little 75 on it, that's about the best it gets. It's got a little bit of reverb to it. Let's see, turn that off. Like a 200 watt head or 150 watt head, this thing could really dry those speakers, you know. But all the guys, a little 75. 
and that's as good as it gets. So, it's very old, but it works, and uh, one less thing to have to work on. So, any questions about this or anything else, Dave in Texas, bye.